So this morning we're going to be teaching on the tribe of Joseph. We are currently in a series of studies which teach the tribes of Israel with a spiritual application in relationship to the church in the end times. The first level of interpretation is the literal interpretation of those tribes in the time of the tribulation period. There is a spiritual application of each one of those tribes in relationship to the church progressively. And because they are written on the gates of the city of Jerusalem, and the city of Jerusalem also represents the church, then each of these gates are accesses to the throne of God. And as we go through press progressively through these tribes, beginning with Judah, which is praise and worship, and then secondarily uh, Reuben, which means behold the sun, and, and progressively as we go through those tribes, we see uh, these doors of access to him that's on the throne as we progressively grow in the spirit. So this morning, we're going to be looking at the tribe of Joseph. This is uh, Rachel's firstborn son, and this is the context in Genesis chapter 30. The Bible says about Rachel uh, giving birth here uh, to Joseph. So we see the Bible tells us in verse 22, and God remembered Rachel. This term remember doesn't mean that God actually forgot about Rachel. What it means is that at this point in her life, he is sovereignly involved in bringing a supernatural event and occurrence uh, in, in her life. So evidently there was something in Rachel that had changed because Rachel... Uh, was one, one of the reasons the Bible says that her womb was barren was because Leah was hated. So that it implies that Rachel possibly uh, was involved in that along with Jacob. So her womb was shut up. But now we see that God remembers her. Now he's able to sovereignly work in her life, which means that evidently she had something change inside of her that allowed that supernatural uh, time of visitation, not that God forgot her, but that now he is sovereignly doing a work in her. And it's related, no doubt, with something that had changed in her. Oftentimes in our life, we hinder what God wants to do uh, in our lives by our attitudes and actions, etc. And uh, we have to learn how to trust the Lord and, and keep the right attitude and the right spirit through the times of testing. And evidently, there was a change in her life. And then she produces a son named Joseph, which means to add... And I believe that she actually taught this principle to her son uh, about trusting God, no matter what happens to him in life, to always trust in the Lord at all times, uh, to believe in God, to always respond correctly, to have the right attitude because of, of obviously the principle of sowing and reaping. And Joseph did that in his life. So we see the Bible says that God added, uh, added, uh, would add eventually Benjamin also to her. And this is a prophetic utterance by her. So now God is opening her womb and she gives birth to a son, which means Joseph. And Joseph means to add. So in the last days or in, in application, spiritual application to the church, it is showing us by his name, Joseph, that we should be adding to the kingdom of God. We should be evangelistic. We should be winning souls. We should be bringing something to the kingdom of God. We should be adding to that we should be resourceful bringing resources and people of resources etc in the last days but also it teaches us about how that we are to handle trials because Joseph went through a lot and uh, he was sold by his brothers into slavery um, hated by his brothers and uh, also other, other events in his life, he ended up in prison. A lot of hardships in Joseph's life before the dream that he had, which showed that he would rule and reign, actually came to pass. But each time, he kept his heart right with the Lord, his attitude right, spirit right with God. Uh, temptation would come to him. He overcame the temptation, remained uh, uh, abstinent in times when he came under temptation. And ultimately, God was gonna, would bless his life as a result of that. Uh, in Genesis 37... The Bible tells us also something about Joseph, that he was loved by his father, Jacob. No doubt Jacob loved him, uh, and the Scripture tells us that. In verse 1, Jacob dwelt the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. 
And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than his, all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. So today we're going to title this message, uh, The Sealed People, Joseph, the Coat of Many Colors, or Joseph with the Rainbow Coat. Joseph and the Rainbow Coat. Now, when we look in Genesis chapter 49, we see that Jacob, before he dies, he actually blesses Joseph and there's a very lengthy um, teaching there about Joseph and the blessings that would be upon his life, uh, no doubt because of the way that he handled the difficulties that would come to him and trust in God at all times. In the 49th chapter of the book of Genesis, we see that Jacob blesses him. And he says, Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well whose branches run over the wall. In the actual original Hebrew translation, and this is from Art Scroll, it's called Bereshit, a commentary on the book of Genesis. It's interesting that this is translated, a charming, a charming son is Joseph, a charming son to the eye. And notice there that it's duplicated, which means it's, it's according to the Hebrew commentator here, it's a stitch. It's poetically repeated, which means it's said twice. It's said once, and then it's, it's duplicated like a stitch uh, to explain it or to emphasize just how blessed this young man was. He was a ma young man that was thriving. He was blessed by God. Uh, and we're going to see the reasons for that as we go through here. Of course, his father recognized that Joseph was special and gave him this coat, this rainbow coat, the coat of many colors. That speaks of a mantle. First Chronicles chapter 5 says he was treated like the firstborn son. And that means he received a double portion. So he was tremendously blessed. He was doubly portioned through Manasseh and Ephraim, uh, his sons. And uh, so he was tremendously blessed and he was favored by the father. He was chosen by the father and uh, as the firstborn son received the double portion. Also, he was mantled uh, with that coat of many colors, which speaks of authority in the household of a prophet or a priest or a king type of authority. So Joseph was extremely blessed and favored a, a young man, a son that was in covenant. Again, that's a sign of the coat, a sign of a covenant, a sign of a son that keeps covenant, a sign that's chosen by the father. But also a son that went through tribulation, a son that went through difficult times before his dream came to pass and ascended to the throne. So as we look at his life, we're going to see at times we will go through things and, and that are difficult, that are, that are trying, that are like tribulation times in the future of the tribulation period. And uh, ultimately before we ascend to the throne. But Joseph gives us an, an understanding of how we have access to that throne, that kingdom, because his, his life speaks of the millennial reign of Jesus Christ and the kingdom. So when we look here, the emphasis in the Hebrew is that he is a charming son, and it's recorded a charming son to the eye. And then it goes on and says, each of the girls climb heights to gaze. So Joseph was so blessed uh, that uh, even the Egyptian young women would look over the wall and uh, not just look at him, but gaze at him. because he must, So he must have been a very handsome young man, and he's very, very, uh, very blessed as a young man that he gained even the attention of the young women. And they would climb heights in order to, to be able to see him. Then the scripture also tells us, though, that even though he was tremendously blessed and his, his fruitful boughs are like the vineyard. Uh, it wasn't just within the boundaries, but it was growing over the walls. And he just had such an influence. And uh, his life was such a blessing that he reached out to other people. And uh, not only that, but those boughs or that vineyard would actually rest upon the wall because there was just so much fruit in Joseph's lives, so much added, so much production, so much blessing in his life that even the wall had to hold and sustain the fruit that he had. But he would want to use that to be able to bless other people, not just for himself. And that's the way we should be as a Joseph tribe. We should have resources. We should have a desire to be able to bless other people as well and reach over the walls of, of our personal influence into other people's lives. So he was tremendously blessed here. And it is a stitch. It's repeated twice so that we would see just how blessed he was. Then the Bible tells us, though, as a result of his blessing, that there were some uh, problems that came with that. And those problems that came with that was the way people responded to him. Um, 
in the King James Version, it says, the archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. The Hebrew translates it, they embittered him and became antagonists. The arrow tongue men hated him. And so in the midst of him being blessed in his life, tremendously really with a double portion, even ultimately through Ephraim and Manasseh, and even his daughters would have a certain amount of inheritance in the land if you study the book of Joshua. We find that the, the Bible tells us, though, that with that blessing, and as I've said before, if you have something, know something, and do something in life, there's always going to be somebody after you. If you don't have anything, know anything, or don't do anything, then nobody's ever going to be after you. But Joseph, because he was tremendously blessed, this is the results of that. There were people that hated him. There were people that slandered him, that falsely accused him at times. And, but the Bible tells us, even though that was happening, that God sustained him and made his uh, bow was firmly in place and his arms were gilded. That means his arms were like gold and uh, just strong, very strong. And God maintained him during those times of battle and made him strong in those times of battle and just continued to bless him no matter what somebody tried to do, how they tried to destroy him, how they tried to, uh, and literally the word literally means to totally destroy no matter what they tried to do, God sustained him and empowered him during those difficult times and nobody could take his blessing. And I'm sure there are times in your life where that you are having similar things that happen to you. Maybe in the workplace, somebody has it in for you. But continue to walk with God. Keep a right attitude. Don't shoot the arrows back. And trust the Lord with the situation. And ultimately, God can take care of you and, and intervene into that. And that's what the Bible is telling us, that God is his strength in that time. So, you know, we thank God no matter that what we go through, as long as we, we keep our eyes on God, that he will help us through those difficult times. And then the Bible tells us um, not only that, uh, but his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. So God empowered him. God gave him strength during those times of battle. So it was a supernatural strength that came uh, to Joseph in his life from the hand of God. And God's hands made his hands strong through those very, very, very trying times. Uh, so this way we should be as a church during the times of testing, during the times of tribulation. No matter who is trying to destroy, we should just keep our eyes on the Lord and, and trust in God and not take it into our own hands and, and retaliate. We should have the spirit uh, of Joseph and just believe that God's going to be our strength through all times, even times of tribulation. Ultimately, we have a destiny. I would say this at times, when you make decisions in your life in the present, we make those decisions based on the future. So if we, we want to have a blessings, the blessings of God in our life, or the call of God in our life will be affected by the decisions we make in the present time. So I try to make decisions, and I know many of you try to make decisions in that light, so that you have the right attitude, the right spirit, the right right words and and behave correctly and have the right actions in your life so as you don't mess up your future so always keep that in mind keep your future in mind um, and make the right decisions uh, so you don't don't disqualify yourself uh, from that happening in the future but God was with him no matter what he went through uh, they would take him and throw him in a pit and sell him off into Egypt. And then ultimately he gets up in Egypt and uh, he, he is at that time goes through tests and trials. But God, every time, uh, you know, something happened in his life, God just used it to promote him. He eventually ends up in prison. He's falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, uh, ends up in prison. He's forgotten by the butler and the baker. But ultimately, God's going to use all of that for his good. And the Bible says that God was with Joseph no matter what he went through uh, during those difficult times. That means that Joseph kept his heart right with God during those challenging times. So God sustained him. God empowered him. God strengthened him. And the Bible tells us that uh, it was by the mighty power of Jacob, the Hebrew. From there, he shepherded the stone of Israel. So he was seen as being shepherded by God and that the ultimate stone is God. And those characteristics of God was, were, were seen in Joseph's life. He was like a shepherd uh, seeking to care for the people. And also he was, he was strong like, like God, but he was also like a rock. And God is our rock. And Joseph, of course, laid his head on that rock when he first started his journey. It was a time when he was in a test, when he was running from his life. But he went over to Luz, which means light, and he laid down, his head down upon a rock. 
And that rock was with him throughout his life. And that's the way he looked at it. He laid his head on that rock, which was the Messiah. And that rock, Messiah, Mashiach, was anointed by, by Joseph there. It's all a type of Jesus Christ. And there Joseph dedicated his life to the Lord to serve God, to, to maintain the covenant, to keep the covenant, no matter what he went through, and also bring his tithe to the Lord. And as a result of that, that commitment, he stayed with it for the rest of his life. No matter what he went through, he always continued to be faithful to God in that covenant because he was a son of a covenant. And God continued to bless his life and strengthen him. But God was that rock that started out in the journey when it was very difficult and ultimately all the way to the throne. Uh, Joseph recognized through that journey from misery all the way to the throne that God was his rock. And that's the way he lived and he trusted God that way. And then the scripture tells us a little bit further on, um, it, it says that his, the arms of his hands were made strong by the hand of the mighty God of Jacob. You know, Jacob was so strong, he could pull that bow all the way back to the fullest extent. And not everybody could do that, but Joseph could do that. And he could do that by the power of God that was in his life. But jo Joseph refused to return those arrows back to his brothers. He refused to return any arrows to any slander. Uh, he trusted God and, and he trusted the Lord to help him in all those situations. And God ultimately did. And so we see that God is his strength. He is his shepherd, his stone, even at the beginning of his life all the way to the end. And that's the way Joseph looked at life. He trusted God and God was with him. Through all those times. And that's the way we need to be in these last days. We need to be a Joseph. We need to be a blessing to other people. And yes, there will be attacks and slanders and difficulties that will come to us uh, because of those blessings in our lives. But we just leave it and put it in the hands of God. And ultimately, God will help us. And then the Bible goes on and says in verse 25, Even by the God of thy Father who shall help thee, and by the Almighty who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep, Life under the blessing of the breast and of the womb. So what God is saying there is Joseph's life is going to be so blessed um, that um, he even Shaddai Almighty would be in his life. And because he was Shaddai from the beginning, uh, his provider from the very beginning, he continues to be his Shaddai, his almighty God. Uh, through these difficult times in his life, then he'll be shot, shot eye to him all the way through. And God will continue to bless him even above the blessing of his father. Or literally it means, again, the stitch uh, is that he would have the blessings of his father and also the blessings uh, that God would give him. So we'd be a double portion man in his blessings. So extremely, extremely blessed of God, extremely fruitful uh, because of his walk and his faithfulness to the Lord. The Bible continues to tell us, um, as we look at it here, it says he'll be blessed uh, of the heaven above. And so literally what God is saying is that Joseph is going to be supernaturally blessed. And then it talks about also he would be blessed from the uh, couches, from the ble uh, blessings of the deep crouching below. So he'd also be blessed naturally in life. And so he's got a blessing naturally that would come to him. And also supernaturally God at times would bring, uh, you know, miraculous provision, miraculous blessings to Joseph's life. Because, again, of his faithfulness to the covenant and the character that he had as a, as a man of God. Um, the Bible continues, as, as we see here in the text of Scripture. Uh, verse 26, the blessing of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors and of the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. So Joseph says not only is he blessed doubly like his father and himself, but also he's like the hills. So it'd be an enduring blessing. It'd be an everlasting blessing. Uh, there would be um, no boundaries to it. It's, he wouldn't have a boundary as far as the size of the blessing nor would he have a boundary, it would not be limited as to time. So it would be such a large blessing that it encompassed large blessings uh, that didn't have boundaries on them but all in content, but also in duration. His blessings endured all the way even to the, into eternity like the hills would be seen uh, as a picture of. And so he's tremendously blessed by God, but before... Um, he made it to that throne room, and that's our goal, to be like Joseph. There were great trials and great tests and tribulation that would come to him, even seven-year tribulation that would come to him before, uh, ultimately, uh, he would experience uh, the throne, the destiny of the throne. 
And so we learn from Joseph's lives uh, to have access to the throne, to be like Joseph, to be faithful to God in our life. Um, then the Bible says, as we finish here, they shall be on the head of Joseph and, and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. So, you know, God just made, turned it all out to be a crown for him. And uh, at times in our lives, you know, even Paul talked about it, that if there be no res resurrection from the dead, we're of all men most miserable, but now is Christ risen from the dead. So we see and understand that even serving the Lord now at times, it, it can be miserable, very difficult, but because we believe he's alive and we live for eternal life, the resurrection, ultimately the throne of God, that uh, even in difficult times we can make it through. It sustains us because he lives. And so this shows us just how blessed uh, Joseph was. Now, in the 50th chapter as well, when you look at it, the Bible tells us Joseph um, tells his brethren, he says in, um, starting there in verse 20, Uh, he, here's, his, here's his whole spirit and attitude of chapter 50. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones, and I will be comforted, uh, comforted. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. The children also of Machar, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you, or literally remember you, and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from hence. And Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin. So we see, even at the end of his life, he still put his faith in God, and he's asked his brothers to take him uh, to the promised land, uh, take his bones to the promised land. We know the Bible says that he was put in a coffin here in the Scripture, the, the uh, last verse of the last book, uh, last chapter of Genesis, he was put in a coffin. So we see the wage of sin is death, and we see the end results of, of, of sin here in the closing statements of the book of Genesis. Um, Joseph would die, but he believed in the future redemption. So he uses a term here. The Hebrew term is pakod, yifkod, is connected to the Redeemer, the visitation of God. So he believed, and he said it twice. Again, here's another stitch. He believed it, and it's repeated, that God would come and that God would redeem his people in the future. And uh, he would use Moses to redeem them out of Egypt. And then he would use Messiah to redeem them uh, at Calvary's cross and, and then ultimately at the second coming. So Yif code, uh, the code here in the Hebrew, or code Yif code, remember, or to visit is a code word that was used by Joseph, I believe was given to him by Jacob. Jewish commentators tell us that, that spoke of the coming redemption. And Joseph put his faith in that coming redemption in the Messiah. And then ultimately uh, in the second coming of the Lord as well, when, uh, amen, there would be the resurrection of the damned. So he, a uh, resurrection of the dead. So we see here that Joseph was faithful all the way to the end in trusting God and walking in covenant with God. What is interesting is if, as you study this, and they took his bones, and the word here, coffin, literally is the same word in the Hebrew that means the ark, like the ark of the covenant. And so when they took his bones out of, out of uh, Egypt, we see that they carried his bones out of, in a coffin like an ark. Um, the significance of that is this, is that ultimately when the ark of God would be made, the ark would contain the law, the word of God. And so you would look over there and you would see Joseph's ark, his coffin, alongside the ark of the covenant. And then people would look at that as a testimony and as a witness. And they would say, well, the word of God is in that ark. But the one who was faithful to that, to that word that's in that ark is in that ark. And he so was so faithful to God and obeying God's word that they had a visible example of a man who walked with faith and trusted God no matter what. 
And so they would say his, his bones is a bones of a person who maintained covenant and walked in obedience to God. Uh, and that law that's in the other ark is what he obeyed. And ultimately, when they took his bones, the ark, of the coffin there of Joseph, when they came to the Red Sea, and there was the need of a water test or a water ordeal to determine guilt or innocence, when they took his bones to that, to that reed sea there, that sea opened up. And uh, the Jewish commentators obviously know that the Bible says it was God that did that. But the influence of Joseph's bones, him being righteous, and he was so faithful to God and so righteous that even the waters, when it had a water test come and the ordeal of water, even those waters had to move in the presence of a man like that. And so it shows you the power of somebody that walks in covenant with God and trusts God in, in every area of their life so that his bones even impacted the waters and the water test. And it proved that Joseph was a righteous man. Uh, but there's also a separation that's taken place there in Pharaoh's armies were drowned in the sea. It's a picture of the last days when the righteous, the redeemed of the Lord, there'll be a separation that will take place. And then, of course, those that are not under the blood will be judged by God Almighty like that that happened there at the Reed Sea. We've experienced the water test in our life when we're water baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. So our, our life is under the blood. And when he, so, he looks at us, it's not based on our own condition, but it's based on a righteousness, a redemption that has been passed to us through our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. So this shows you the power of a faithful life. Now, when we look at it also in the book of Revelation, we see in Revelation chapter 4, we're talking about the rainbow code of Joseph and, and this, this attitude of the spirit of a people of, of, of the last days that have a desire to make it to that kingdom age and to the throne of God, uh, not only literally in the future, but spiritually. Uh, that we are to add, we should, are, should be evangelistic and resourceful and, and furthering the kingdom of God. We should be a people that no matter what we go through, we look to God and trust God as our rock, as our strength, as the shepherd of our life, as Shaddai, our provider. So this is the kind of attitude that we have. And at times our condition doesn't line up with our, um, you know, our provision in God. But the way that God looks at us is, is through uh, the covenant that we have with him. So as we look at the book of Revelation, we see, again, reference to the rainbow. And uh, the, the Bible talks about uh, this rainbow around about the throne. And the one that's sitting on the throne looked like an emerald and sard and stone. Um, we see there that this rainbow around the throne speaks of a covenant. And uh, all we can see in that particular rainbow is the green. And the green speaks of, of, uh, of a covenant as well. And it speaks of uh, eternal life. Praise the Lord. But also, if you could see the other colors, there would be a total of seven colors. Now, in Revelation chapter 10, the Bible talks about a man clothed uh, that had a rainbow on his head. He's got his foot on the sea and the land. And that, that could be the uh, pick type of the Lord Jesus or it could be the Lord Jesus himself. So Jesus is the covenant maker and the covenant keeper. And we're in covenant with him uh, ultimately. But... When we look at that rainbow around, around about the throne, and that's our destiny, that's where we're going, is, is because we are in covenant with God and a covenant people. We are a rainbow, uh, we are crowned with a rainbow, if you will, as well. Uh, and so Joseph is a picture of that. Now, when we look at it, um, he had the dream that he would ultimately be upon the throne, and they destined for the throne, and so are we. He was in covenant with God. He's a type of Jesus Christ. Um, a son of covenant, but there was something in him that, that kept him. Uh, when temptation came, he remained faithful to God and, and uh, remained abstinent uh, in, in, even in times of temptation. And so he's a testimony there as well uh, as going through trials and tests. But ultimately, uh, he knew that there was a throne that was, was going to uh, come and that's what he lived for. And that's what we should also live for as we see Jesus sitting upon the throne, that we would be with him as overcomers. And we know that Joseph overcame the religious institution of Egypt, being faithful to God. In a sense, you could say he overcame the harlot that was in Egypt, the religious harlot back on the scarlet-colored beast in Revelation 17. He overcame that. We must overcome the religious harlot institutions of men, the ideologies and religious systems of men. 
and remain faithful to the word of God and, and the covenant of God over above that religious system of men, the harlot, the harlot church. And Joseph did that. So we are to be a Joseph in that aspect to make it to the throne. Also, he overcame, you would say, a world government under Antichrist because Pharaoh is a type of the Antichrist and he overcame that and stayed faithful to the Lord. And ultimately, seven years of tribulation, but then seven years of plenty. And ultimately, it's a picture of the kingdom age. Uh, we see that he also defeated the Antichrist in the sense that whenever they brought his bones up to the uh, Jordan River, or the Reed Sea, it opened up. And then Pharaoh was swallowed as a type of the Antichrist being defeated. So these are the things that we should, as an end time church, see that we must overcome uh, world government systems, that means being faithful to God, not that we're in anarchy or in anything like that, but we're faithful to the Lord, amen, trusting God in these difficult times that will come. We overcome the world system, we overcome religious systems, we overcome uh, the Antichrist uh, that will seek to destroy the church in the last days. But if we do, God will see us through and ultimately will rule and reign with Him. Now, as we look at the rainbow, the colors of the rainbow, uh, you know, goes back to the book of Genesis, even in Matthew 24. The Bible says, as the days of Noah were, were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So we look in the ba back in the days of Noah, uh, that rainbow that's around the throne in, Genesis, uh, in Revelation chapter 4, the Greek word is toxon. It's the same word in the Septuagint for the rainbow in Noah. So we see then again that covenant God made with, with Noah and with mankind and not to destroy the earth again. Uh, we see that covenant here in relationship to Joseph's life and to our life that he's a covenant keeping God. And that the rainbow is pointed toward heaven not toward the earth. Not at this time anyway. But in the future he will turn that again and, and point the arrows back in judgment upon the earth. So we are to be faithful to the Lord remain in covenant. But... As to the colors of the rainbow, we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And these colors, when you look at them, they have different levels of, of vibration. The lowest level of vibration is the red. So we start with the red, and that, that simply means that we start with the blood. And it's by the blood that we eventually make it to the throne. But as you go through from the blood, the red, which is the lowest level of vibration, go through each of those colors, it's a picture of the various stages that the church goes through ultimately until we reach the throne of God because we have in the, the latter colors of the rainbow, we have uh, blue, which speaks of heaven. We have indigo. We have violet. That speaks of the, of, of the throne, so of ruling. So we're going through these stages, uh, you know, as a people, the stages of the tribes of Israel. Uh, we're learning how to live as the people of God. And then also these stages of the color of the rainbow. Because in a sense we are wearing the mantle. We are wearing that uh, rainbow coat as well. So we start with the blood and progressively go. Uh, we don't leave the blood. But we, we start there and progressively go until we, we make it through the, through, to the throne. Through these various stages and levels of vibration. The highest level of vibration is when you get up into the blue and these other colors at the end. And then when you look at uh, also the stones of paradise and the stones on the breastplate of the high priest, uh, all of these things are connected. The stones in the New Jerusalem, all of these things are connected with the various colors, uh, etc. that are connected with the worship of, of God. Amen. So it's very interesting to understand the life of Joseph that we as a, as a people... We see that just like there's seven colors in the rainbow. There's seven covenants of God that are recorded in the word of God. There are seven churches as well uh, in the book of Revelation, seven churches. So we see that's, again, a number of covenant. And when you look at the book of Revelation, you can look at it not just from the perspective of a literal future fulfillment, but you can look at, at, look at it as a covenantal book, uh, a book of redemption, and teach it from a cov covenantal viewpoint. Uh, which is a uh, revelation from a redemptive viewpoint. And it's a very beautiful thing. So God is showing us by the life of Joseph, his blessings, his testimony, his hardships, the things he went through, the things he had to overcome in order to make it to the throne. Uh, ultimately, and he's showing us that we are a rainbow people as well uh, because we're in covenant with God. And let us remain faithful to the Lord no matter what happens uh, in our lives. Overcome 
the beast overcome, world systems overcome, uh, religious systems overcome, anything, temptations that would come our way by God's strength. And if we do come short, we can go to God in prayer and seek God for forgiveness and also for help and strength to continue. Uh, as we go through and we see here that these colors of the rainbow, you know, these colors are really light and they are seen because they're bent. And when you see the rainbow in the sky, the reason why you can see the rainbow in the sky is because the light is being bent. And it's being bent in the atmosphere through the, through the molecules or, or you might even say the dust, uh, the dust that's in the atmosphere uh, bends that light and that rain or the moisture in the air bends that light and you can see the colors. And so what God does through his people and we're a rainbow people is that God takes his light. And he radiates that light through us. And that light, in a sense, is bent. His glory is bent so that the manifestation of the beauty of God's glory is seen in our life. And what bends that light is the body, soul, and spirit. And God, God works through our body, soul, and spirit in order for, us, for that light, his glory, to be manifested as well. Uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, three manifestations of one God, uh, bends that light so we can see the various colors of the glory of God. In the Old Testament, we had the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. And, and those three uh, uh, levels, if you will, or stages, if you will, uh, teach us of this light that's being bent so that we go from, from glory to glory. Amen. And so this teaches us that we should be a people uh, faithful to the Lord, faithful to the covenant of God, a covenant people, and believe that in the, in the last days... That Adam, the red man, Adam, the fallen man, can be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And he is the last Adam. And ultimately, we have a destiny. It's called the, the throne of the living God, being with God in eternity and ultimately uh, serving God. But now in time, in the spirit, we can see a Joseph manifestation in our life. We can see the blessings, the resources of God that come. And also the challenges and people attacks and tribulation and trials that would come but we see how to handle that how to live as a people to always look to the future and determine our present decisions and actions by what that future goal is and that is the throne and to rule and reign with Christ but also to be useful to God in his kingdom so we thank God that Joseph is an, is an amazing example to us uh, as the people of God in this hour uh, gives us further and greater access to the one that's on the throne of course Joseph is ultimately a type of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But let us have the qualities of a Joseph in us. A quality, uh, a men mentality, a spirit, a heart, a, um, an action-driven life that understands that we're going somewhere. And let us live unto that purpose. Not just for the present in time, but in the future as well. So I pray this has been a blessing to you. Let us go forward and re reflect his light. Uh, through our bodies, through our soul and our spirit, just like Joseph did. At times he didn't have that literal physical mantle upon his body, but that mantle was still, still there and God saw that. And when God saw that and, and that Joseph lived up to that, that he was able to release blessings in his life, ultimately with the destiny being the throne. And that's where we are, are headed. Um, there is a plate that I have in my office and that plate shows a picture of the Lord and it shows the picture of the Lord in that coat of many colors and that coat of many colors uh, is actually the different flags of, of the world different flags of people and it shows us how that God has a desire not just to bless Israel the 144,000 Israelites but he has a desire to bless the nations of the world uh, through him and so ultimately he is the one that's the covenant God the one that has the coat of many colors, the rainbow coat. It's the Lord, but he has imparted that to a people. And so we are in the spirit, a people that have been clothed uh, with the coat, the rainbow coat, and the covenant coat, the covenant people. And let us be faithful through all trials and tests as God blesses us and remembers us as well, which means that he will sovereignly intervene in our lives in times um, he desires to bless us and uh, let us be faithful like Joseph did. I believe a lot of that was put into him by his, his mother. And as you come to the church, you learn. Because you're, the church is the mother of us all. And you come here and you learn 
uh, as the people of God, uh, how that you are to live. And I believe also as parents that we should put in our children uh, things, principles like Joseph walked by. No doubt was placed in him by his father and his mother and taught him how to live in difficult situations and look to God and trust God. So we need these principles in our life in a practical way as well. So may the Lord bless you real well, real good is my prayer. If you have a desire to know more about the, the stones, the, the colors of the stones, the breastplate of the high priest, and what tribes were on those stones, we've taught a little bit about it in relationship to this series uh, but also on YouTube, we have a series called the Constellation Series in the playlist. And you can go over there and look at the one on Leo. And we talked about the different names on those breastplates. And they also probably had the constellations inscribed upon the stones of the breastplate. As well as the, as the constellations in the tribal flags that flew over each tribe. Uh, but as you look at that, you will see that it could be by birth, like the stones on the shoulder. It could be by encampment, Numbers chapter 2. Or it could be by the traveling or the journeys of the camps, Numbers 10. Not totally sure exactly how those stones uh, were inscribed by what tribe. Maybe there are some that understand that. But ultimately, we, we are looking to paradise. We're looking uh, to, to be with the Lord in glory. And Joseph helps us to obtain, attain and to add into our life the things that need to be added so that we can be a blessing to the kingdom of God and ultimately uh, here by the Lord enter into uh, the joy of the Lord, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. So, amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.